Hey everybody, Jabman025 here. Today I'm taking a look at my 89th Master Grade, the RX-0 Gundam Unicorn 02 Banshee. This is the Big Bad Gundam from Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. During the last episode we got a glimpse of it, during the next episode of Gundam Unicorn we're going to be seeing a whole lot more. So, let's have a look and see what we got. First off, looking at the plates. A lot of people complain that even though this is called the Black Unicorn, most of the colors are in a dark navy blue. I don't have a big problem with this because they called the Titans Gundam, the Titans Mark II, the Black Gundam, and really it's mostly navy blue. So, now I did have a problem with this plate. This plate is supposed to be the Psycho Frame. It's supposed to look clear yellow, and to me, it looks like a deep clear orange. And quite frankly, I just like the gold look better, so I decided to repaint the entire Psycho Frame in a gold. Another problem we have is with these gold parts, quote, in quotation marks, gold parts here. This is for the head section. This is all in kind of a yellowish color, and it looks hideous in my opinion. They should have gold-plated this, or electroplated, or something, but they didn't. So, I repainted them in a... Inca gold for these parts here. Kind of gives a little bit deeper golder color, a little darker. And I like the way it turned out. For the Psycho Frame, I went with Brilliant Gold, which is a much more metallic look to it. I like the shine it shine through. And you see, there's a lot of Psycho Frame parts, so this took a lot of time to paint everything for the Psycho Frame. But I like the shine, the metallic look this gives off. See the torso all put together? Similar to the original Unicorn, there is a few minor differences in the uh, collar around the neck. I, like I said, I really like the way the sh gold shine turned out. This is more of a preference thing. Nothing really wrong with the original yellow. I just didn't like it. It's up to you if you build it. But like I said, lots of gold parts. Lots of Psycho Frame. And on this kit in particular, there's more Psycho Frame than the original Gundam Unicorn. I'll talk about that in a bit. Head on this guy, similar to the original Unicorn. The main difference is the headpiece. So you have this section here that claps onto the front. And one part there is supposed to be black. Now, they give you a sticker for it. I went ahead and just painted it, you see there. I just went back and painted it. But they give you that little black sticker you can put on if you so desire. The V-fin they give you is a split horn that can be folded up, and quite frankly, it doesn't work. It's supposed to line up perfectly with that little horn, and just, just doesn't want to line up. I've tried every way I could possibly think of. But, they give you an open style V-fin and a closed style horn, so you can just switch those out, and that's what I recommend you do. What do I mean by lining up? Well, when it's closed up into unicorn mode, the horns connect, as you see here, to form one big old giant horn. That on the folding V-fin just doesn't seem to want to line up. I tried everything I possibly could, but I just couldn't get it to line up perfectly. I don't know why. But the single horns fit perfectly. No big issues. You see one problem here. That big collar does hamper posability on the head a little. It can't look too far to the left or right, not much up or down either. Now the big change is, of course, on the arms on this kit. You see the right arm where you get the, uh, what do you want to call it, rail gun, beam smart gun, whatever it is. It's big and it's dangerous. So there's a little handle in there that's going to collapse around the fist. There is a hand on, in there. Can't really see it right now, but there is a hand. That little handle is going to go on top of that hand. For standard. Unicorn mode is going to fold up to the back. You can see it's a 3-1 and then the thumb hand standard in there. See, the thumb's going to put at a funny angle for this to work. But there you go. You can see a little bit of psycho frame in destroy mode. On the other hand, you get this big old thing. Ah, big old, what do you want to call it? Smasher, claw, whatever you want to call it. It's big and it's dangerous and it's going to rip any other gun you, it comes across in half. Right now it's in a giant fist mode, and you see there is another hand in there, and you can't really do much with it. Transform Destroy mode opens up into this big old giant claw, lots of psycho frame in there, and that gold looks really cool. And you see there, now you can actually use the hand that's in there. Kind of, it's a little tricky. A lot of posability out of the claws, you can up, down, you can move them out to the side. 
Uh, lots of individual articulation points, so you can do all sorts of different movements with the claw, and that's really neat looking. The legs on this kit are pretty much a carbon copy part-wise of the original unicorns. The difference is, parts that were not Psycho Frame before are now. You see those gold parts there, back on the original unicorn, they were gray. Same with the skirt armor. There are some parts on there that were gray before, now they're Psycho Frame, so you get that gold peeking through, and that's kind of neat. But otherwise, it's pretty much a carbon copy, just you see a little bit more Psycho Frame on this guy. Decals on this kit, by Master Grade standards, there's a fair bit of decals. Not a ton, but a fair bit. By Unicorn Verka and Full Armor Unicorn Verka, it's virtually naked. They're just they're nowhere near as many decals. There are some really neat ones back here, some pinstriping on the backpack. Looks really nice, but when I saw all the decals, I was like, oh, that's not that much. And truthfully, by Master Grade standards, it's a fair amount, but by comparison next to the Unicorn Verka, it's not even in the same ballpark. Comparison next to the full armor, well, that's a whole different animal. But anyway. Accessories. Outside of what's on the arms, you get a beam sabers. You can actually get four, one on each arm and the two on the backpack. They're only going to give you two pink blades, though. I usually would complain about this, but quite frankly, you can only use one at a time anyway. Right now, you can only use the right hand, because the left hand is inaccessible thanks to the claw. When you transform into destroy modes, vice versa. The right hand is inaccessible, and the left hand is usable. So you're only really going to be using one at a time, maybe one on the arm. That's about it. You can see, when you're all finished, you're going to have a whole lot of leftover parts. In the manual, they have all sorts of parts X'd out. One in particular is all the parts for the shield. But they give you all the parts for the shield. So if you really wanted to, you can go ahead and make it. They don't give you the instructions, but if you have one of the old... Unicorn kits, you can pop out that manual and build it. The hazard being, of course, uh, there's no place to put it. Transformed. This looks really cool. The big glowing red eyes. The gold psycho frame peeking out. I'm really happy with the way the gold turned out. Really get that shine and that glow that you kind of sense from the psycho frame. The ankles on this kit, just like all unicorns, stink. The knees problems have been taken care of, just like they were in Full Armor Unicorn, no parts falling off. And as big as those arms all are, they don't really have any weight issues. So, move them all around, put them wherever you want, and they're not going to have that big of a problem. But, truth be told, the Gundam Unicorn never was the best balance kit to begin with, so even a little bit of weight issues can mess this up a little more. That's why, for me, I decided to put him in on action base. You give it a connection for the crotch. Not the best on earth, not the worst, but it gets the job done. But once you get a mare born, any issues with the ankles or the knees or the hips go away. The weapons on the arms are nowhere, nowhere near heavy enough to cause any problems. So you can get just about any pose you want. And quite frankly, this kit just looks better in the air. I didn't really think the unicorn looked better in the air, but the banshee does, in my opinion, for whatever reason. Final thoughts on this kit... I'm giving this kit a thumbs up. I will say I do have a gripe with this kit and the fact that they very easily could have given us a few extra parts to make the novel version of the Banshee. Could have got the beam magnum. You already got the shield in there. They could have given us some extra parts for the arms. Instead, they decided to do a separate limited edition release for the novel version where you get the blue-green psycho frame. Again, that's Bandai trying to make some a little extra money. Shocking, I know. But I really think they could have easily just thrown in the extra parts for the novel version with this version of the Banshee. Minor gripe, but what you going to do? Thumbs up for this kit. Again, it's pretty much a recolor. If you don't like some of the colors, you do have to repaint them, but that's a personal choice. I'm happy with the purchase. I'm giving it a thumbs up. Since it's mainly a recycle, this isn't a contender for kit of the year, but still, good kit. Thumbs up. Well, gang, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. hope you found it informative. If you've got any questions, please ask them. I will answer them as best as I can. Uh, please stay tuned for more. I always got more reviews coming. Leave a comment. You guys know I love reading them. And I will see you guys next time. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Do you have any fours? Nope. Sorry. Nope. Go fish. Damn it.